Michael have told you, the Cipriano doesn't exist. But Jamie, it feels so real! Oh, Jamie? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yes, it is true that Michael was having a nightmare there. But don't worry, as challenging and as high-pitched as this instrument may seem and be, it's not as bad as you may think. So what is a soprillo? Well, it is an instrument that is precisely one octave above the B-flat soprano sax, or half an octave above the E-flat sopranino sax, and it is fingered from a bottom B-flat to a top E-flat. Now this instrument has been designed by the specialist maker based in Munich in Germany, Benedict Eppelsheim. And he specializes in making really tiny, tiny instruments like this one here and the huge instruments that we've featured in our store, the basses and contrabasses. And Benedict is just, he's an incredible guy, a proper engineer, really knows what he's doing. All of the things that he designs, all the instruments that he makes are absolute feats of engineering. And it's not just saxophones, he makes some other weird and wonderful instruments as well. But we absolutely love his work here at sax.co.uk. So in terms of the design of this instrument, before we get onto its playability and all the rest of it, it has a really curious thing going on with the octave key. So we'd normally expect to find an octave key on any saxophone right here at the top. That would be the first octave, and then the second octave would be further down. But in this case, because all the proportions have just been squished so much, the octave key is actually embedded into the mouthpiece which is just incredible um, from the visual point of view, first of all. At first you look at it and think, eh, what is going on there? I just don't get it. And then you realize that this, this thin sort of lever of metal is actually an octave key, and it sits just above the top of the ligature there. And then we've got another octave key just below it here. But otherwise, in terms of the design, it's got the basic saxophone mechanism that you'd expect to find with any saxophone here. You can see you know, your right hand E flat C here, you can see the usual arrangement of table keys here, um, but as I man mentioned in the outset, in terms of its upper range, we're only going to fingered E flat, so he doesn't go up to the E and then the F and the F sharp beyond that, because it's just so hard to achieve these notes and do you necessarily need to go that high anyway. This top E flat is high enough, but more about that later. So that's the fingered range of it, that's the basic mechanics of it. Um, so it is just like a reduced version of a sopranino or a, a soprano saxophone, but obviously pitched an octave above. So in terms of the playability of the soprillo, I can't lie to you, this is a really challenging instrument to play. I think even on Benedict's website, he actually mentions that this is not for amateur players and it should be considered a professional instrument. And even if you're a professional player and you pick it up at first, you might be baffled by how hard it is to get all of the notes because it requires such specialist technique and perseverance, really. Um, there's a guy that we once connected with here at Sax.co called Nigel Wood, who's possibly the most famous Soprillo player in the world. And we did a little collab video with him, actually. It was great. I was playing one of the bass instruments. He was playing this. And I seem to remember the story goes that he almost locked himself in a cupboard probably wasn't a cupboard, it was probably a music studio, for two years to, to become adept at playing this so he can play it out and about. And he is an absolutely fantastic player and does really well on the Soprillo, so much better than I'm about to sound in a minute, but I will give it a go. So it's that kind of dedication that you really need in order to, to really sort of eke out the, the juice in this instrument because it's all there, the engineering is perfect, but it does take some persistence and perseverance and all the rest of it. So that is your sort of health warning that comes with this instrument. In terms of its practical use, I mean, it's going to be limited, let's face it. Um, there's not much music out there for the Soprillo, so you kind of have to make it your own. You know, if you're going to invest in this and you're a, a really adept player, professional or whatever, you probably already have an idea in mind in terms of what you're going to do with this instrument, whether it's writing your own music, recording studio pieces, 
Um, just even getting a reputation for being the only Soprillo player, you know, in your area or maybe even the country and that might get you work alone. You know, it's that kind of niche specialist instrument. You're not going to buy one of these and then think, oh, they didn't let me into the band. Why not? Well, I mean, look at it and you will hear it now. So I'm going to uh, um, embarrass myself, as I've said. I'm going to play a few bits and pieces, try and demonstrate the range. Um, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to go up to the top E flat because I just cannot get there. I think I can hit an A if I'm really lucky, and then beyond that, um, yeah, the notes just fail. They are there to be got, but I just can't do it at this stage, I'm going to be honest with you. So let's see how it sounds. Well, there you go, guys. Actually, I strangely did enjoy that experience of playing the Soprillo for you. Um, I would say my experience of playing it has been maybe five minutes a day for um, three or four days or so, so maybe 20 minutes accumulated uh, minutes. And the reason it's only five minutes a day is because it really does butcher your bottom lip. You know, we're all taught as sax players to have a nice relaxed embouchure and all the rest and support. Well, certainly you need the support to, to get the best out of this. You absolutely need to be pushing from the diaphragm, um, but you cannot slacken off here. You do need a certain amount of, of firmness and this is the, the bit that you would develop if you played it for you know weeks and months at a time to try and get anywhere near as good as Nigel Wood is. Um, but I have actually progressed in the, in the last few days, so I can give you guys hope out there that if you buy one of these things, after a few days you will be better at it if you persevere again. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I have to admit, I in terms of what I did for you there, I kept it nice and simple. I didn't go above G, I kind of chickened out. I can play the A, but I didn't want to risk it here. Um, and we've got another, what, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat to go in the range. So there's a fair bit more to explore there. And it's obviously all attainable. I've heard Nigel do it. Um, at, so it does have a lot of scope, a lot of potential and it's just a really interesting bit of kit. Um, you know, if you're the kind of player, I, I mentioned before the kind of musician who might like to buy this instrument, but I know there's a lot of oddballs out there and you just like to collect weird and in interesting instruments, and this is certainly one of those. So you now know it. We have these at sax.co.uk. We have this in stock, so come and try it out in the London store. It is here for you to try out. Um, so there you go, that's that's what I've got to say on the Soprillo. If you like this video, please do remember to put a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thanks for watching, I will see you again on the next one.